is Khan Sansta. Oh, Ananta Koti Vaishnavinda Ki. Namacharya Srila Haridas Thakur Ki. Prem Se Koho Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhakta Vinda Ki. Shri Shri Radha Krishna Gogopinath Shyam Kun Radha Kun Giri Gavadhan Ki. Shri Vrinda Devi Ganga Devi Jamuna Devi Bhakti Devi Ki. Shri Vrinda Vandham Ki. Mathura Dham Ki. Maya Purnavadvip Dham Ki. Shri Jagannath Puri Dham Ki. Shri Dwaka Puri Dham Ki. Shri Ayodhya Puri Dham Ki. Hari Nam Sankirtan Ki. Hari Nam Sankirtan Ki. Gaur Premanande Hari Hari Bol. Samaveta Bhakta Vinda Ki. Samaveta Bhakta Vinda Ki. Samaveta Bhakta Vinda Ki. Srila Prabhupada Ki. Hare Krishna. Nama Om Vishnu Padaya. Krishna Prashtaya Bhutale. Srimate Bhaktivedanta Swamaniti Namane. Namaste Saraswate Devi. Gauravani Pracharane. Nirvishesha Shunyavadi. Paschatya Deshatarane. Om Ajnana Timirandasya Jnananjana Shalakaya Chakshurun Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Shri Chaitanya Mano Bhishtam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Gada Mahiyam Dadati Swapadantikam हे कृष्ण करुणा सिंधो दीन बंधो जगत पथे गोपेश गोपिका कांत राधा कांत नमोस्तुते तप्त कांचन गौरांगी राधे वृंदावनेश्वरी वृषभानुसुते देवी प्रणमामि हरि प्रिये Vancha kalpa tarubhyascha, kripa sindhubhya evacha, patita nam pavane bhyo, vaishnave bhyo namo namaha, jai shri krishna chaitanya, prabhu nityananda, shri advaita gadadhara, shri vasadi gaur bhakta vrinda, hare krishna, hare krishna, Krishna Krishna Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Om Purnamada Purnamidam Purnat Purnamudachate Purnasya Purnamadaya Purnameva Vashishyate Om Shanti 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 Hari Om. Sure, the chapter 16, Bhagavad Gita. Today there'll be a discussion on 16th chapter of Bhagavad Gita. So we'll start. I don't think in the time allotted I can cover the whole chapter. But we'll read from the... 16th chapter and then discuss some of the ideas there. So we start at the beginning, which is a long verse and a very, very long purport by Srila Prabhupada. Sri Bhagavan Uvacha. Well, you want to all repeat? Okay, no, no problem, right? Right, it's being displayed so you can follow. Abhayam sattva samshuddhir Jnana yoga vyavastitihi Dhanam damascha yajnyascha Swadhyaya sthapa arjavam Ahimsa satyam akrodhas 
त्यागशातिरपैशुनम दया भूतेश्वरो लुप्तम मार्धवम ह्रिय चापलम तेजस्मादृति शौचम अद्रोहो नाति मानिता भवन्ति संपदम दैवीम अभिजातस्य भारत so that's the that's called samhita path when you read the text in sanskrit i didn't explain that also and then there's pada path that i explained that you read the words so let's do pada path it's not written here but pada word path reading pada path Shri Bhagavan Uvacha, the Supreme Personality of Godhead said, Abhayam, fearlessness, Sattva Samshuddhihi, purification of one's existence, Jnana, Jnana is Hindi and Bengali, but Jnana is Sanskrit. In knowledge, In knowledge. Yoga, yoga of linking up, of linking up. Vyavaya, 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 vyavastitihi. Vyavastitihi. the situation, the situation. Dhanam, Dhanam, charity, charity. Dhamaha, Dhamaha, controlling the mind, controlling the mind. cha. And yajnaha, performance of sacrifice, cha, and swadhyayaha, study of Vedic literature. Technically, it's self study, by the way. Tapaha, austerity, arjavam, simplicity. Ahimsa, non-violence, satyam, truthfulness, akrodaha, freedom from anger, tyagaha, renunciation, shantihi, tranquility, apaishunam, aversion to fault finding, daya, mercy. Bhuteshu, towards all living entities, alolubtham, freedom from greed, mardhavam, gentleness, hrihi, modesty, achapalam, determination, tejaha, vigor, kshama, forgiveness. Dritihi, fortitude, shaucham, cleanliness, adrohaha, freedom from envy, na, not, atimanita, expectation of honor, bhavanti, are, sampadam, the qualities, daivim, the transcendental nature, abhijatasya, of one who is born of, Bharata, O son of Bharat. Translation, purport is so long that I'm going to skip it. But the translation, the Supreme Personality of God had said, fearlessness, purification of one's existence, cultivation of spiritual knowledge. Charity, self-control, performance of sacrifice, study of the Vedas, austerity, simplicity, non-violence, truthfulness, freedom from anger, renunciation, tranquility, aversion to fault-finding, compassion for all living entities, freedom from covetousness, 
gentleness, modesty, steady determination, vigor, forgiveness, fortitude, cleanliness, and freedom from envy and, the, and from the passion for honor. These transcendental qualities, O son of Bharata, belong to godly men endowed with divine nature. I think we can just give a lecture on this one verse. It's so many things, right? So many things to cover. Ahimsa, you've heard this word. We were talking, I think, last week about Sanskrit words in English. Ahimsa is in English now or no? Not yet? What is ahimsa? Nonviolence. Himsa means violence. Ahimsa, nonviolence. So this city is famous for a personality who and unfortunately was assassinated 55 years ago who was a proponent of nonviolence. Who is that? Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. He came to India. He visited Gandhi's ashram. And in the famous speech in Washington, D.C., I have a dream speech. How many people heard that speech? Wow, most of the people here. If you see on the YouTube that speech, you'll notice that many people were wearing these Gandhi caps because they were following... Mahatma Gandhi, who was the great propounder of nonviolence. The thing is that Bhagavad Gita, here Krishna tells Arjuna that the, the, the divine quality is nonviolence, yet Krishna is telling Arjuna to fight, and fighting is violence. So is it contradictory? I'll explain. I'll explain. It seems contradictory, right? Military man is here. If you fight for justice, if you fight for the rule of law, that is considered righteous. It is, it is also... Our, so therefore, Krishna is telling Arjuna to fight. The, the story of the Mahabharata, the great history of India, which Gita is one section of, the story was that the five brothers, the Pandavas, were exiled from the kingdom after losing a gambling match. You know the story? Who knows this story? You know. Oh, you know the story. Wow, great. So very few people here know the story. So these five brothers, they were intimately related with Lord Krishna. Bhagavad means God. Bhagavad Gita, Song of God. Gita is a song, poem. So in the Gita, you have the five, I mean, in the Mahabharata, the five brothers are exiled for 13 years, 12 years, and one year incognito. Right now you can browse incognito on your, right, computer browser. You can go incognito, right? So they, they had to live for one year incognito. And after that one year, they came back to Delhi. Delhi was, the old name was Hastinapur. Hasti means elephant. So it was a city of elephants. Now if you go to India and Delhi, you, it'll be hard to find an elephant. But you know where you see a lot of elephants? What city in India? Kerala is not a city. Kerala is a state. You are correct. There are a lot of elephants in the jungle today in Kerala. They're also in Assam. Anywhere else? I think Assam and Kerala. I don't know if there's any other states in India where there are elephants in the jungle. Maybe no. Any other? Anyway, it's, we have to research that. But there's a city where they keep many elephants today for the tourists. Jaipur. You've heard of Jaipur? You've been to Jaipur. You rode the elephant? No, my mother rode the elephant in Jaipur. My late mother. It was, so they have many elephants and they take the public, get elephant rides. Otherwise, elephants were common all over India. Still, they move around. They move around, but it's become much less. It's become much less. 
So the Kshatriya is a class of administrators. So there are four classes of people according to who? Krishna. Here in the Gita before this, Krishna says, I divided society into four classes. Marxists say there should be no class in society, classless society. But we see, you know, they are more intelligent, they're less intelligent. The business, people can do business. They have business sense. They're called the Vaishas. And the martial arts, the military people are the Kshatriyas, the administrators, politicians. You know, it's funny that even in these democratic countries, the United States is a democratic country, India is a democrat, the world's largest democracy. But there's a ruling class here and there. The politicians, the common people don't actually, they're not involved in government, governmental affairs. You can become a politician, but once you're a politician, you're involved in governmental affairs. So they're the Kshatriyas. So the Pandavas were Kshatriyas. Arjuna was a Kshatriya. So... There are also the brahmanas, the intellectuals. Today you have the lawyers, professors, uh, teachers. Those are the brahmanas. Brahmana, Chatriya, Vaishya. And then there's the labor class. And the labor class, whatever type of labor, they, they, the traditional labor classes in India, we still see. The carpenters, the blacksmiths, the potters. A few years ago, everybody would have a new clay pot to drink in every day. A little clay glass. And when you were finished drinking your milk or your even water, you would throw it away. And it was biodegradable. You use the plastic and you throw it away. It becomes a burden on the environment. So this was the system in India. So Arjuna was a Kshatriya. After 13 years, they came back. So they were supposed to get part of the kingdom because their father was the brother of the king, but he wouldn't give. So they said, give us five villages. So their cousin, the leader of their cousin's hundred sons, that's another story in the Mahabharata. No, five villages we won't give you. So if you won't give five villages, then we'll have to fight for that. We'll have to fight for our share of the kingdom. Come on, let's fight. So the battle was about to begin and the Gita was spoken. That's the situation. The battle is north of Delhi. You can go there today, Kurukshetra. It's uh, 100 miles north of Delhi, three hours in a train or a bus. Faster if you have a fast car and there's nobody on the road and it's in the middle of the night. <laughs> Kurukshetra still exists. And there's a place in Kurukshetra where they say the Gita was spoken, Jyotisar. Jyotisar. How many of you have been to Kurukshetra? Just us two? Three. Only the three of us. Okay. Somebody over there is not raising her hand. Up Kurukshetra Nege? Okay. Not following. So now. Krishna made so many instructions to Arjuna. Now, these are divine qualities that you were born with. Now, here it says, O son of Bharata, belong to godly men endowed with divine nature. Abhijatasya Bharata, okay. No, after, I'm sorry. I, I'm, I'm not confused, but I think when he, uh, what? Right, right. Uh, before or after? Right. After these are the divine qualities, and then the demoniac qualities are are enunciated. But Lord Krishna told Arjuna. No, no. It's after the demoniac qualities. He, he first, in the first three verses here in 16, that's what we went over. Can you go back to the 
Sanskrit verses who yeah. It it yeah, it, there it shows one, two, and three in the Devanagari, but not in the English. Come down, where does it say yes in, after synonyms? Translation doesn't say verses one through three. What we read are verses one through three. And and now four, he de 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 defines the demoniac qualities. And in the fifth verse, Krishna tells Arjuna, Do not worry, O son of Pandu. Abhijo ma sucha sampadam daivim abhijato si Pandava. Don't worry, you were born with the divine qualities. Everyone is not born with the divine qualities. So we have to imbibe the divine qualities by studying them. We should learn what are the these divine qualities. So I mentioned one of them is nonviolence. It's a divine quality. But sometimes violence is required. Just like uh, Arjuna is being inspired, even though Krishna tells this. Because for a higher purpose, to follow the religious principles of Vedic culture, he had to f fight his cousins and his guru, by the way. And his grandfather. And Arjuna at the beginning of Gita, I don't want to kill my guru. I don't want to kill my grandfather. But Krishna is giving all these instructions with the ultimate aim of uh, inspiring Arjuna. Inspiring, what's the other word? We were talking about that. What's that other word like inspire? Pardon? Self -motivate. Motivate, thank you. It's motivation. He wanted to motivate Arjun, Arjuna to kill his guru and his grandfather who were fighting on the wrong side. They were Because it was only proper to get the kingdom back. They didn't want to give, so they had to take it. They didn't want to take the whole kingdom. They just asked for five villages. He wouldn't give. So it was they were behaving wrong. So be, wrong behavior is called adharma. That means against religious principles. But religious principles come from where? They come from Vedas. So here, Abhayam is the first thing mentioned. Abhaya. Bhaya is fear. Ahar nidra bhaya maitunam. You've heard these words? You know. Ahara, food. Nidra, sleep. Bhaya, fear. Maitunam, uh, the combination of a man and a woman. Ahari, ahara nidra bhaya maitunam cha etat samanam pashubir naranam. These four qualities we find in the animals and in the human beings. What are they? Food, animals, the dogs, the cats, the, the, any birds. What do the birds do all day? They look for food and they look for a mate. They build a shelter. They take shelter in a tree. Ahara, bhaya, might, ahara, nidra, and they sleep. All animals follow this. And human beings also. Etat samanam. Samanam means same. Pashubihi of the animals. Naranam of the human beings. Abhayam, freedom from fear. So how do you become free from fear? So a human being be can only become free from fear when he realizes fully that the body is only a covering of the soul. When you know that the body is already going to die. So you can either understand what that is, which is the soul transmigrating from one body to the other. Or you can take some intoxication and try and forget it. That's what modern society is doing. So there's different types of intoxication. Drugs, alcohol, Comic Con. <laughs> Yesterday, I went to the Comic Con. And I, it's, it's another type of intoxication, isn't it? It's a, they're creating a world of illusion. Well, that's what the movies and the TV... They create a world of illusion. 
Of course, there is some, you know, a dramatization of a historical fact is not a world of illusion, or a documentary is not a... Prabhupada encouraged filmmaking. Prabhupada encouraged filmmaking, but make the film, you know, on the li like I mentioned, there's a life of Prabhupada been made. Uh, you can watch that. You can watch it on YouTube, I think. It's called Abha Abhay Charan. Prabhupada's name was Abhaya. Freedom of fear. Freedom from fear. So when you know that you're the soul and you break out of this illusion that I am the body, you become fearless. But if you think I am the body and after the death there is nothing, annihilation, then you become fearful. What will happen? Or you fear the void, right? The void. So abhayam is a divine quality. Sattva samshuddhi, to be situated in the mode of goodness. So last week we talked about that. To be sattvic in the mode of goodness, first thing is give up non-vegetarian food. First thing. Because non-vegetarian food is in the mode of ignorance. That's why we gave it up. I mean, I have to admit, I was born in a family of non-vegetarians. My kids were not born in a family of non-vegetarians, but I was born in a family of non-vegetarians. But we gave it up. Somehow we understood. So if you can uplift yourself from the mode of ignorance to the mode of goodness, whoever it is, I'm talking to everybody, including myself, that is a divine quality. Sattva samshuddhi. To be situated, purification of one's existence by becoming situated in the mode of goodness. That's divine. Jnana, knowledge. Yoga, linking with God. Because here, yoga, asanas are also exercises. Uh, that's good. We're not against it. But the yoga has to be seen, the word has to be seen in the context. When it's used here, it means, it actually means liberation. It actually means salvation. I was watching an interview on a video with a god brother, Brigupati. But he was being interviewed by someone who wasn't a follower of the Vedic culture. Let's put it like that. And that fellow came to the conclusion, these Hare Krishna people, they don't believe in salvation. But he, he had a wrong conception. He had a wrong conception. And, you know, it was a chance meeting between this guy had a microphone and a camera. Well, we, we all have microphones and cameras now. <laughs> Taking a video of someone is like drinking a glass of water. So... You know, he wasn't prepared. He didn't, the other guy didn't understand. But freedom from the repetition of birth and death is salvation. That's what we're saying. And yoga means that you have linked with the supreme. That means getting out of the repetition of birth and death. So, jnana yoga vyavastitihi, the situation of linking with the supreme through knowledge and going beyond the ignorance of the material con concepts. The material concept is uh, atma, dehatma buddhi. Deha is the body, atma is the self, and buddhi means a certain type of intelligence where you think you are this body, right? Indian, Pakistani, Chinese, American, Canadian... But actually, these are temporary coverings. Just like my name is not Mr. Red Shirt, Mr. Blue Shirt, Mr. White Shirt, or Mr. Black Shirt. Right? We are not the shirt. We're inside the shirt. So we're in the body, but we're not the body. So that's in the beginning of Gita when Arjuna says, I don't want to kill my grandfather. I don't want to kill my guru. I don't want to kill my cousins. Here they say cousins in India, it's brother. I don't want to kill my brothers. 
And Krishna said, well, you're talking foolish because there is no death for the soul. The body will die. That's a fact. When you kill the kings, you're not killing them because they're eternal. The soul is eternal. The body is temporary. The body will go away. Yeah, you might live till 90 or 100 or 105. Or There's a very, very few people who live to what, 110 or 115 or 120. The body has to die. But the soul will not die. It will go into another body. That's the beginning of Gita. So let's see some other divine qualities. Dhanam, charity. So in Mahabharata, there's a famous character, Karna. And the secret is that you, you, I mentioned the five Pandavas, right? Who heard of the five Pandavas? Pancha Pandavas. I, keep your hands up for a minute. Thank you. So it's about 50%. So the five brothers, Pandavas, were descendants of King Pandu. That's why they're called the Pandavas. But there was a sixth brother, Karna. That's a secret that comes out at the end of the Mahabharata. So Karna is actually the brother of the Pandavas, but he fought with Duryodhana and the guru and the grandfather on the side of the Kauravas. So he was born with, when he was born, it's, this is a, a Adbhuta Katha. Adbhuta means wonderful story. Katha story, Adbhuta, wonderful. He was born with a Kavacha. A Kavacha is an armor. You know, the, in the Middle Ages, they put on the armor, and today you have body, what is it? A bullet, bulletproof armor. The vest, and now they have different type of equipment that's not just a simple vest, whatever. So he was born with the armor. So then uh, that someone, that Indra came to him, please give me that armor. So he had to cut it off his body. This is a story in the Mahabharata. Because he was a Dhanavira, a great heroic giver of charity. Dhanam, charity. Vira, heroic person. How many of you heard the word Mahavira? Mahavira in Hindi. You heard that word? Great hero. That's what it means. Mahavira, 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 great hero. So he was a Dana Vira, Danam, charity, Vira. Karna, in India, the, everyone in India heard this, Danvir Karna, the great heroic charitable person. So anyone came to him, he would give them something, what they wanted. That's a charitable person. So he was one of the greatest charitable persons. So to be charitable, actually it's a divine quality and it's, it's very rare to find a charitable person who's willing to give everything. In fact, if you study the Srimad Bhagavatam, you have the set over there today, that big stack of books. The, the Srimad Bhagavatam, there's the story of Bali Maharaj. And in India, everyone knows this saying, Balidan. Balidan, Balidanam. Maybe in South India, it's Danam. North India, Balidan. Why? So if you know the story from Bhagavatam, Lord Vishnu incarnated as a small Brahmin boy. And that dwarf is called Vamana. So Vamana, Avatar, you know Avatar, incarnation of Vamana. So Bali was a king. You heard of Prahlad Maharaj, right? This is the grandson of Prahlad Maharaj, Bali Maharaj. So, Bali, Vamana, the, the system of Brahmanas is to beg from the kings. That was the system of Brahmanas. And the kings like Karna or like Bali, they would give in charity. So, the, there are these words in Sanskrit, Biksham Bhavati. 
Dehi, actually, Bhavati is uh, Bhavati is Sri Lingam. Excuse me, only that that was a house to house begging from the housewife, Biksham Bhavati from the ladies. They would explain, but Biksham Dehi, give me something begging. So Brahmanas were allowed to beg. So Vamana is actually Lord Vishnu. Avyapnoti iti Vishnu, who he's all pervading supreme personality of Godhead. I want to beg from you. Yes, Bali Maharaj. He said, "Yes, ask me. What do you want? Anything? I'm ready." Kings were Danaviras. Kings were very charitable. All I want is three steps. Ask for more. Ask for beautiful wives. Ask for riches, ask for, uh, you know, uh, whatever, whatever you want. Grains, food grains, animals. In Vedic culture, food grains and animals and, and uh, jewels were considered wealth. Gold is considered wealth. Not a fancy car. That's not considered wealth. Today, it's considered wealth. But in Vedic culture... There is a, a description of Lord Krishna in India. This is very right. Hati Gorda Palaki Jai Kanaya Lalki. Krishna had many elephants, horses. What else? Hati Gorda. And that's it. He was he had many elephants and horses. So Jai Kanaya Lal. Kanaya Lal is Krishna. The possessor of horses and elephants. Food grains is considered wealth. You don't have to go to the store every day. You have the grains in your warehouse. So, Bali was asked by Vishnu, disguised as a small Brahmin boy, okay, take three steps. So with two steps, he took the whole universe. How is that possible? Only God can do that. With two steps, then he told Bali, I've taken everything, where will I put the third step? So he said, put on my head. That is, he surrendered himself fully to Lord Vishnu. Balidanam, that means Balidanam in India, fully surrendered to the Lord. So, Danam, those are examples of charity in, in, in the Bhagavatam. And after Danam, Damaha, controlling the mind. Isn't that the most difficult thing? Right? Arjuna told Krishna that uh, Chanchalaha ihi manaha Krishnaha. Hey, O oh Lord Krishna, the mind is very fickle. Chanchalaha. Chanchalam hi manaha Krishna pramati. The mind wanders here and there. Isn't that right? Pramati. Balavadhridham. And the mind is very uh, powerful. The mind can take you anywhere. Tasya ham nigraham manye vayuriva sudushkaram. I consider that controlling the mind is more difficult than controlling the wind. So that analogy is given. Controlling the wind is impossible. And there's another, what's a popular thing for an uncontrollable situation? There's a saying. Any guess? Herding cats. Can you herd cats? Not possible. Right? So it's, it's a similar type of a parallel. Controlling the wind, impossible. Herding cats, impossible. Controlling the mind, I consider it more difficult than controlling the wind, Arjuna tells Krishna. But Krishna says it's a divine quality. Damaha, control the mind. Mental health issues is a big thing in the United States, right, today? Mental health. Well, Krishna 5,000 years ago said that controlling the mind is mental health. That's what is mental health. Because the mind can go wild. So you have to control your mind. So it's a divine quality. What else do we have here? Dhamacha yajnyaha. 
performance of sacrifice. So the Vedic, the Vedas and the Kalpa Sutras, the Vedangas, they, they prescribe fire sacrifices. So these fire sacrifices, you have to pronounce these mantras of the Vedas absolutely correctly. It is very difficult. You know, you, you may not even be able to pronounce one mantra. Like, Isha Vasyam Idam Sarvam. But it has to be correctly. Uh, what is it? I'm forgetting right now. No, no, no. Mine also. Turn off the ringer. So, Udata, Anudata, and Swarita. Sahasra, Shirsha, Purushaha, Sahasrakshas, Sahasra, Pat, Sabhumim, Vishvato, Vritva, Atyatishta, Dashan, Gulam. You have to pronounce it absolutely correctly. Uh, Krishnaya, Swaha, Krishnaya, Idam, Namama. So you have to pre perform fire sacrifice. But in Kali Yuga is difficult. So we say chanting of Hare Krishna Maha Mantra is Japa Yajna. It is the sacrifice of Japa. Uh, Yajnai Sankir and Sankirtana. Yajnai Sankirtana Prayaihi. By performance of Sankirtan Yagna. These two Yagnas, Japa Yagna is mentioned in Gita. And Sankirtana Yagna was started by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu 500 years ago. So that is the yagna that's recommended, Harinam Sankirtan. So Sankirtana means chanting. Sankirtana means a group chanting. So we had that and we will have that. How much time is there? From, from 12 to 12.30, there was... Sankirtana and from when will you start? 145 will start Kirtan again. So now let's go on. Another Swadhyaya study of Vedic literature. Study of the Vedas actually. Prabhupada translates it study of Vedic literature. But in the, in the, that's the word for word, but in the translation of the verse, it says study of Vedas. It's the same thing. So one has to study Vedas. Wow. Let's see. Study of Vedas. There are four Vedas. Rig Veda, Yajur Veda, Sama Veda, Atharva Veda. So, Brahmanas, Kshatriyas, and Vaishyas were supposed to study Vedas. Studying means memorizing. The, the Vedic system is, here it's called the Chinese system, actually. It, they call it rote. You have to memorize it. Cramming. But cramming, you memorize just to pass a test. Here, m mantra memorization was for life. So that it was, it was data entry. It was entered in your head, the Vedic mantras. So anytime you could pull out those mantras. Tapaha, austerity. That's, that's very difficult. Arjavam, simplicity. So that's up to everyone individually to live a simple life. If you have a hundred pairs of shoes, you're not living simply, right? <laughs> who had the fame? Who was famous for having two, three thousand pairs of shoes? What was her name? Imelda right, Im Imelda Marcos. The younger generation never heard of Marcos. It's our generation. He was a dictator of the Philippines, and his wife was very uh, extravagant. So she had like three thousand pairs of shoes. So that's not simple living. And you know, if you really want to see simple living, you have to come to India and see people living in the huts. We were talking about that this morning. That, you know, they're, they're, they make a hut out of mud. There's mud walls. And then they plaster the 
everything plastered with mud and the roof is just made out of uh, different leaves from the forest. So that's simple living. And there's no toilets. The biggest shock of all, the big shocker. Right now in India, there's a lot of propaganda by the government that don't marry your daughter into a family where there's no toilet. Because I'll explain why. J just think of how much trouble they have to go through to make this drainage system. But the natural system is to go out into a out of a town. You, people were living in villages, so you would go out of the village, and you would defecate and use water in toilet paper. How much wood is wasted in toilet paper? That was a big crisis in the pandemic, right? There's no toilet paper. But the Vedic system and in China also, they don't. Use, nobody uses toilet paper. Use water to wash yourself, and then you have to wash your hands with, with mud, with dirt. So that's considered pure in Vedic culture. And the Vishnu Purana, it says you should go out of the town to defecate. So it, defecation is considered impure. As soon as you are finished with defecation, you're supposed to take a bath in a river. Vedic culture, the concept of a bath is not a shower. I'm taking a shower every day. But the Vedic culture, you're supposed to submerse your body in water. So the best water is the river like the Ganga, Ganges. That's the best. Then the river that flows into the ocean. Uh, there are seven sacred rivers in Vedic civilization. Gangecha, Yamunechaiva, Godavari, Saraswati, Narmada, Sindhu, Kaveri. These are the seven most sacred rivers. But that's only found in India and Pakistan. One of them was starts in India and goes through Pakistan, Sindhu. So you should take a bath in the river. If not a river, a stream. If not a stream, a lake. The name of the lake is Pushkaraha in Sanskrit. Every temple in South India has to have the Pushkarini, a small lake. And in Bengal, they cannot pronounce Pushkar. They say Pukur, Pukur. It's the same thing, Pushkaraha. And there's a very famous place of pilgrimage in India called Pushkar, which is a lake in Rajasthan. And next to the lake, there's a temple of Lord Brahma, one of the few, one or two temples in India of Lord Brahma. So whenever there's an eclipse, the people used to get into the lake or the river. When Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was born, there was, that's coming up in a few days. Gaur Purnima, the poster is there on the wall. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was born during the eclipse and everyone was immersed in the Ganga, Ganges. He was born on the bank of the Ganges and everyone was chanting, Hari Bol, Hari Bol. So that, was, that came out of Arjavam, simplicity, simple living. Living a simple life because you know everything is temporary. If you collect, 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 then you have to give it up, right? You have to give it up. I mean, we are ordinary people. We probably know someone who passed away and left a lot of things. I don't know how many of you did, but I had to go through this experience. It took 10 days to clean out. My younger brother left his body six years ago, and we had to clean out his apartment. It took 10 days. He collected all of this junk that nobody cared about. It all went in the dumpster. So why collect all of these things? How is that helping your soul? It doesn't. It doesn't help the soul. So arjava means live simply. And this is the first verse of the Ishopanishad. Do you have Ishopanishad here? So Ishopanishad is from the Vedas, Shukla Yajurveda. And the first verse of the Ishopanishad, Ishavasya Midam Sarvam, everything actually belongs to the Supreme Lord, Ishwara, Isha. Ishavasya Midam Sarvam. Tena Tena Bhunjita, a little bit later, in the same mantra. In the Vedas, there it's only mantras. Ishavasyamidam sarvam yat kincha jagatyam jagat. Everything in the universe 
belongs to Ishvara. Tena, tyak tena bhunjita. What you need, you should take. Take what you need. Don't take too much. Unnecessarily. Magrida kasyas vidadam. Because that wealth is actually meant for everyone. It's not meant for you alone. But now we have this, you know, businessmen who accumulate, accumulate, accumulate. And, uh, well, they say that we'll give it away. They say we'll give it away. So that wasn't the, that's not the aim of life is to accumulate things or even to accumulate wealth. The aim of life is self-realization, atma sakshatkar, to know who you are, where you're going. I don't have enough time to get through even these three even these three shlokas, I don't have enough time to get through. So, tapaha we dis- uh, no tapaha went. Arjabam ahimsa nonviolence. Let's speak a little more about nonviolence. So, even a person who a military person is always nonviolent, isn't it? But when the time comes, he may not. He may be violent. But generally, so nonviolence is a saintly, divine quality. Sometimes you may have to use violence if you're a chatriya. But uh, if you are violent for no reason, it is not divine, it is demoniac. So uh, generally, one should be nonviolent. And then uh, non- real nonviolence means don't kill animals. Don't be, uh, what is it, involved in the killing of animals. That, unfortunately, the killing of animals is a huge industry, but it's not supposed to be. It's not supposed to be. So it's a demoniac society. Killing animals is not considered wrong. But actually, the animals are suffering when they're when they're killed, they have suffer tremendous pain. So if you eat vegetables and fruits, you're not causing that type of pain. And the next one, satyam, truthfulness. It's very difficult to be truthful. It's not easy. But honesty is the best policy. That's the saying. And that's the teaching here. To be truthful is a divine quality. And to be deceitful is the opposite. So if someone is not truthful, you can understand he's not situated on the highest platform of goodness. Akrodaha. That's like ahimsa, similar. Freedom from anger. Freedom from anger. So these things are linked. Control of the mind, uh, uh, nonviolence, and freedom from anger. How do you give up anger? You have to give it up. You have to analyze that I'm becoming angry. It's wrong. That's all. Can't force yourself. You have to understand intellectually. Oh, excuse me. So after freedom from anger, tagaha, renunciation. So renunciation means to give up as far as possible attachment to material things. It's, it's very tough. It's very tough to give up our attachments to material things. That can be done on a mental platform. That can be done on the mental platform. You may, the example is the lotus flower, right? The lotus flower is living on a lake, right? You find these lotus flower lilies, lilies, they they grow in the water, but they don't touch the water. How is that? It's wonderful. So we're living in the material world, but we have to be detached from the material world, even though we're living here. 
How can you do that? Understanding philosophically that you're not this body and you're actually an eternal servant of Krishna. That's how. Shanti, tranquility, peace. So it's a divine quality to be peaceful. It's simple. To be free from anger and to be peaceful is advancement. And to be the opposite is degradation. To be overcome by anger for whatever reason is degradation. To, to never be peaceful, to be agitated constantly for some reason is a quality of degradation. Apaishunam, aversion to fault finding. Wow. Because, you know, by Nate, when you study spiritual subject matter, you find that there are many faults. At the same time, here it says, Apaishunam. Don't be a fault finder. So we say, for example, eating non vegetarian food is a fault. So if I just say, you're non vegetarian, you're non vegetarian, you're degraded. That kind of mentality is not helpful. That kind of mentality is not helpful. You should have compassion. Poor people are eating non-vegetarian food. Let's, let us help them. Let us help them understand why they shouldn't eat that type of food. But if you find a fault, oh, he's like this, he's like that. There's no end of it then. And fault finders... Are, they don't have the divine qualities. They don't have it. <laughs> but you have to distinguish. You, you know that something is wrong, but if you dwell on it, if you berate someone because of that, then it's, that's wrong. Of course, we have compassion. So we want to help people to become situated in the mode of goodness. Daya, mercy. So this is one of the most important of these divine qualities, is to show mercy to the fallen souls, even to the animals. We give some prasad to the animals. In, in India, everybody leaves some food for the animals outside of their house. They leave a chapati and something. Every day they leave some food. So people with the bird feed right? But if you're an animal killer, then where is the mercy? An animal killer has no mercy. That's a conclusion of Vedic culture. So don't kill the animals. It's a good quality. Mercy. Now mercy can be shown in other ways. By giving transcendental knowledge, you're giving mercy. Uh, uh, daya Bhuteshu means mercy to all living entities. Aloluptvam, freedom from greed. Somebody told me that they're charging too much for the books. So th they don't have to charge so much. You see, the businessman who's making a profit he has to make a profit, otherwise he can't run his business. But if he's making too much profit, that's a type of cheating. It's a type of cheating. So one, that, that is done by the greedy people that want to make a 1,000% profit instead of making 50% profit. So that type of greed is not divine. It's, it's not in the mode of goodness. It should be given up. Mard, mardhavam, gentleness. It's, it's hard to be gentle to our fellow human beings even, or to speak of the animals. But this is gentlemanly behavior. Mardhavam. We should show respect even to an ant. That's the teachings of Vaishnavism. Because the ant is also alive. So that kind of mentality that I should show respect to everybody. I should be gentle with everyone. 
But you know, it's it's rare in human society. I think here the people are more they have this quality compared to India, because we see sometimes in India there's some pretty rough <laughs> pretty rough dealings. Some places they expect it, so they just, you know, people don't get uh, upset with that. <laughs> right in Vraj, in Vrindavan. <laughs> Vraj is famous for, you know, a bit of a rough language <laughs> that people use. How can I explain it to you? <laughs> because it's kind of, you know, it's taken and everyone takes it in their stride. But they shouldn't actually behave like that, but it's like common behavior. What do you do? But not everyone is like that. There are many people like that, but not everyone. There are quite a few gentlemen also. I don't want to give a bad name to everyone in Vrindavan <laughs> or in the district. Okay. So, hri hi 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 modesty. So, yeah. What is the opposite of modesty? Braggadocio, right? Someone who likes to brag. I did this, I did that. Uh, you know, you've met those people. But the people who are quiet, but they do something remarkable, they have humility, so that's a good quality. That's one of the divine qualities. Achapalam, determination. Tejaha, vigor. Teja also means power, strength. Kshama, forgiveness. Forgiveness is a tough one. Right? To forgive. But, uh, you know, it's a divine quality to be able to forgive others. even Because who doesn't have a fault? Actually, according to our con uh, Vaishnav concept, there are four faults. Right? According to our previous acharyas, we know that every human being is subject to the four faults. So what are the four faults? Imperfect senses, the propensity to cheat others. I need a little help here. Forgetfulness? Karanapatava, Vipralipsa, Pramada, and... Uh, pramada madness. Madness, imperfect senses, the tendency to find fault and cheating. These are the four. Find fault. So these are, in human society, everybody has these tendencies. It's not just me or ju not just you. Everybody is influenced by this. We make a mistake. Who doesn't make a mistake? To err is human. But to forgive these type of mistakes is the good quality, divine quality, etc., etc. Dritihi, fortitude. Socham, cleanliness. So cleanliness means... You have to wash your hands after eating. You have to wash your mouth after eating. You have to take a bath after defecation. This is in Vedic culture compulsory. Cleanliness of the body. So Prabhupada in the purport, because it's so long and I'm giving the purport here. He says that you should be clean inside and outside. So inside by chanting, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Krishna, Krishna, Hare, Hare. Hare, Rama, Hare, Rama. Rama, Rama, Hare, Hare. This is how you purify your consciousness inside and outside by taking a bath, washing your hands, washing your mouth. But people are not taught these habits in the West so much. Right? There's a joke in England. I take a bath every week even if I don't need to. <laughs> in England. In India, people take, because of a hot climate, so you may take, you're supposed to take three baths a day and in the river and chant Gayatri Mantra. How are we doing on the time? So we should ask for questions. 
And what about questions? Really? I couldn't finish all of the words. Gita is vast, even though there's only 700, 700 verses out of, out of 100,000 verses. 701, three verses we went over. Couldn't finish the three. So, any question? Oh, we have to give the mic to anyone who has a question. I thought it was, there it is, you got it. Anybody want to ask? Yes, Mataji. One second. One second. Let. Uh. Well, my, my oh, you, it's not on. No. I can speak oh. I can speak no, no, it's come. Yes. Oh, much um, better. Right. And, you know, having traveled to India many times in oh, my life, wow. um, I witnessed uh, the sharp duality of Indian culture. And obviously, I love the country because I've been there you know, several times. Sure, sure. But um, it is as though when Bhagavad Gita mentions these class distinctions, even though the government of India has outlawed caste. Um, it seems as though the people in India have internalized these distinctions amongst people. And it was heartbreaking. The degree of poverty that I witnessed, you know, with my own eyes, the degree of suffering that I witnessed while being there, um, it is just it is just very troubling, and I don't understand how a spiritual philosophy, I have a, a big problem understanding how the spiritual philosophy, when it proposes that people are different or belong to different classes, then the trickle-down effect for humanity is extremely dire, in my opinion. So could not... Uh, Lord Krishna foresee this problem when put to the test of humanity because if you're born in a situation that is sometimes referred to as untouchability where you are not worthy of your shadow being uh, cast upon someone uh, it, it has very dire circumstances for humanity and can you explain why uh, differences in people, especially when we have, you know, at least the ideal, all men are created equal. That might not be the actual practice, but the ideal is there. So when your, when your spiritual philosophy says that you are born in this station in life, like I said, it has very dire consequences for humanity from my observation and from my lived experience. It's a profound, you know, dilemma that you're presenting, but it's not actually a dilemma. One thing is that the system itself has been abused. For instance, there is no untouchability in the system. It was introduced later, it's a corruption. It's a corruption. But that there are classes in society it exists all over the world. It may not be spelt out like it is in Vedic culture, Brahmanas, Chatriyas, Vaishyas, and Shudras, but you know, the, the people who are in the military, they associate with each other. There is a military in Europe, there's a military in, you know, Every country of the world. My, my I'm just let me explain. So, if you know the the head shouldn't spit on or cut off the legs because the legs are below the head, it doesn't make sense. And and the whole the body has to function the social body, just like our body functions with the different limbs. 
The arms protect us. The stomach n nourishes us. The legs take us where we want to go. But if we say the legs are lower than the head, we should cut them off, right? So these di differences in occupation, occupational differences, they exist. That some people were cast out of society, there, there's two ways of looking at it. One way is that it's unjust. But other way is, in the, in the remote past, their ancestors were misbehaved. And so they were cast out of society. That was the origin of that. But later on, the mercy was not shown to them. They were abused, right? That's a fact. Now the government, uh, the government can't do everything uh, to stop social injustice. <laughs> it's a very, a very broad topic. Man's inhumanity to man is not only in India, it's all over the world, isn't it? All over the world. How many people did Mao kill? Did, do you find that in India? No. How many people did Stalin kill? Do you find that in India? No. How many people Hitler killed? Hitler killed less people than Mao and Stalin, isn't it? So uh, man's inhumanity to man is not a, a monopoly in one place. But why we say this is Kali Yuga. This is an age of degradation, an age of quarrel and confusion. But there should be a system of social management. Now the West says democracy. But there's a lot of uh, unhappy people in democracy. And so uh, this material world is not, we don't live in a perfect world, it's a cliche. The material world is anyway a prison. You're sentenced to live in a body for so many years, then you have to change that body. Whatever you accumulated, right? Uh, Microsoft, you've heard of Microsoft. It was started by two people, Bill Gates and what was his name? Allen. Steve Allen, was that his name? Jo George Allen, what was his name? No, Jobs is Apple. We're talking Microsoft. Allen, Steve Allen, I think. So what happened? Steve Allen passed away, like Jobs, right? So Steve Allen never married, he, but he collected a huge amount of artwork. And so his sister is selling off the artwork now. So what was the benefit of him collecting all that artwork for himself? You know, the point, <laughs> these are, there are many inequities in society, whether it's Western society or Indian society or Chinese society or wherever. And there are many, but even in Africa, what happened in Rwanda and Burundi? I mean, there was a genocide. The Tutus and the Hutsi, Tutus and the Tutsis and Hutus, excuse me. This happens all over the world. It's not only Africa, it's what happened in China, this thing. That. Man's inhumanity, it's part of this Kali Yuga, what we believe, the age of quarrel and confusion. So we feel the, the Vedic literature came from God. Now, human beings, they don't want to follow the laws of God. That's it. So the Vedic Varnashram system became abused at one point, certain aspects of it. But why condemn the system? Why throw the baby out with the bathwater, as the saying goes? Get rid of the abusive, abusive behavior. Bring the pristine culture back. Revi it's a revival, you could call it. I, I don't know. Suffering in China, it wasn't like that. Or in Russia, you know, all the people who suffered under Stalin. India is a hot place. So, you know, there are a lot of people with darker skin. But not everyone. Not everyone. It's, it's not a color question of color or question of uh, race. It's, it's a question of uh, the degradation of human society in the present age. Kill, slaughtering animals here. It's a huge industry. And if you take a look at the pictures of the slaughterhouse, you'll never want to eat meat. 
right? And people talk about that. So it's going on right now. It's, they call it a business. And the poor animals having their throat slit and, you know, the, the way they kill them also, it's very horrible. So, I mean, uh, who's good and who's not? There's bad everywhere. There's good everywhere. But Vedic culture was, uh, at least uh, what we understand, was a perfect system. Now, because of this day and age, it got degraded. But uh, everywhere there's degradation. So let's try and uh, uplift the people with the good qualities, just like these good qualities are mentioned. How to develop those good qualities? That we should think of. But if we fault find, okay, the faults are there. I'm not saying they're not there. But we shouldn't be too absorbed in fault finding because you can make a life out of fault finding. And we are experiencing that in different ways. Everyone experiences it. It's not a, a monopoly that I'm the only one that sees fault finding. Sure, social justice, uh, you know, people should be just in society. We shouldn't discriminate because the soul is... We don't believe that there's any difference between the soul, even in an animal. That's in the Gita, right? Pandita uh, Samadarshinaha, one who's learned he sees an elephant, a dog, a dog eater as equal because he sees the soul. He doesn't see the body, but the bodies are different. You and I, we're in old bodies and these young people are here in young bodies and there's a little child over there. The body's different. There are many differences. What is the same is the soul. So the soul is an eternal servant of God, according to Vedic literature. Now, the souls are born in different circumstances. Right? Some families are very nice. Some families are broken. Here also there's a lot of, uh, you know, drug addicts, this thing, that thing, the other thing. People, kids did had a broken family. I mean, these faults are everywhere. And it's and it's and they're it's unhappy. It's 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 sad. Wherever there's a fault, if it's a fault in India, it's sad. If someone's poor and starving, it's a sad thing. Nowadays they're not starving. There was a time uh, due to different circumstances, but now you there are poverty is there. But people also were encouraged by Vedic culture to live simply and to just take what you need because you have to give it up anyway. And the climate is such you can live very simply without having, a, having to have heating and air conditioning and whatnot. People didn't live long in these cold places. They would die in the, in the winter. There was no shelter, no heat. Now you have all these modern amenities. But before, right, the Abraham Lincoln story, his, how many sisters and brothers died in the cold? They didn't have a full house to live in and all that stuff. This cold climate, I mean, how people are living, it's tough. Prabhupada commented, this cold climate is not fit for human habitation. Uh, he was from Bengal where there's water everywhere and so there's a lot of people. What's the population of Bengal? It's like 300 million. If you take West Bengal and Bangladesh together, there's 300 million people. That's the same population as, as the U.S. Because it can provide, you know, there's a lot of great rice grows like anything. Three times a year you get crops, bananas, uh, so many fruits. Water isn't required, lots of water. So you get a lot of population. Anyway, let's use the human form of life to engage in bhakti, like Bali Maharaj. Surrender. Uh, God is everywhere. Better you be surrendered to him. And uh, to worry about all the injustices of the world will ultimately give us a big headache because, my God, there's injustice all over the place, isn't it? In so many ways, in different shapes and forms. And human beings, by being born in the material world, you have to suffer. Birth, death, old age, and disease. Everyone has to suffer. Right? The richest man, the most powerful man. How long is Putin going to live? Now he's a great, powerful guy. He doesn't care if th thousands die in the battlefield, right? Doesn't care. But he will get old and die. Gorbachev recently passed away. He, he brought peace. 
You know, by comparison, he was a good guy. He, he wanted peace in the world. And uh, he wanted to end the oppression of the communist rule. He was a communist, but he, he understood it's unjust. So what to, we try and be just and buy these good qualities. Sorry, time. One question was a good question, provoking thoughtfulness among everybody. Thank you. <laughs> Hare Krishna. Where's our tech man? He's gone away. So thank you very much, and I would like to thank Pastor Kush for actually um, you know, gracing us with your association. Um, so um, now we will um, do a short japa session. We will chant Hare Krishna on beads. So um, everyone, um, so the mantra we are chanting is up here, and uh, I request everyone to. Um, so does everybody have beads? It shifts. Okay. All right. Anybody Wanna doesn't have turn beads? off the camera. All right. So the way you we chant on these beads is we hold the bead that's after this head bead. The head bead is the bead that has some string sticking out of it. You would hold the 